your weekly view of young leaders taking big steps. This is NextGen. Sponsored by PFI Westernwear, home of Boot Daddy. We are in the Meat Science Lab with Jasper County 4-H Meat Judging Team. These guys just won state and they are prepping for nationals, which is coming up this fall. Boys, what first brought you together and uh, kind of struck your fancy when judging meat? Well, it all started with my brother. He, he did meat judging first. And when I was old enough, I went because he was doing it. And then uh, I started inviting my friends and uh, they came along too. So kind of a family tradition, boys, are you his friends and you kind of just tagged yeah. along to see? Yeah. We we kind of just got dragged into it by him, didn't really know what we were going to start out doing, didn't have a clue about it, but ended up on the team and getting better every year. So I understand that there's two main components of the, the competition and one of those is identifying meat and there's nearly um, 100 cuts of meat coming from different species. So Brett, take me through the identification part of the competition. So on identifying a piece of meat, you have four things you really look for. You have to look for the species, so by the coloring you can tell this is a pork. Then you go through the primal cuts and you have to decide what part of the body it comes from. So this is a loin chop, so it comes from the loin. And then the cookery method, you would decide if you cook it dry or moist. Looks like the majority of our cuts today are pork. So take me through some of these and uh, ID the species, the primal cuts, retail cuts, and how we cook them. So right here we have spare ribs, which come from the cider belly. I love um, a good spare rib. Yes, always. Uh, you would cook that moist. Um, it does, it comes from the side or rib. This over here would be a rib chop. Uh, it comes from the loin. You would cook this dry. And um, there's pork, beef, and lamb, and almost 100 cuts in the ID, or 100 different um, retails in the ID competition. But you also are judging these and defining and uh, determining that quality. Take me to the judging aspect of the competition. So whenever you're judging um, pork, you're really looking for trim. You don't want a lot of fat on there. So in these two, this one, this one has a lot more fat than the other one, and this one is quite a bit bigger, so this one would put, be, put, be placed over the other one. Yeah. Yeah. And what other identifying characteristics are you looking for when placing these meat cuts? Um, especially in beef, it's okay if I can address beef. Okay. Yeah. You want to look at the marbling, which, you know, that's kind of what that is through there, the streaks of fat. Because fat adds flavor, right? Exactly, yes. You want a, deep, a good amount of, of marbling throughout you know, throughout the cut or whatever you're looking at. And uh, things like that, um, the size, you can tell also by the color, the coloration of the meat. Mm -hmm. um, if it has a good color, then you know, obviously it's, it will place higher over something else. Now, you also have to defend your selections and give a set of reasons. So throw out some terminology you use to defend your placings when presenting the reasons to a judge. You kind of throw out just why you place one over the other, just it had less fat trim or you use marbling, those terminology that we already said. Mm -hmm. And you kind of just want to throw out bigger words that sound better and it kind of gives a, a higher educated sound to your reasons. Okay, now you guys have been practicing for months and months and you're preparing for nationals. So there's got to be a sense of camaraderie and ownership and, and pride when it comes to this competition. Um, what have you been able to learn and um, looking back on this experience in a few years, um, what will you take away from it? For me, it would definitely be the real world experience that you get with all this. I mean, you learn first and foremost how to speak under pressure because mm -hmm. giving reasons is not always the easiest, you know. It's, it can be nerve wracking. You learn uh, critical thinking under pressure definitely because, you know, even I, this is my third year in the competition, it still is pretty stressful sometimes for me. I mean, I'm sure that wears off in time, but you know, it does help a lot over time. You know, in the future, this is good things to have. You know, for a future life lesson. Now, you guys are, are learning real-world life experiences. Um, anybody interested in going into meat science as a profession? I have thought about going into meat science and kind of been quality assurance or just researching on meat and deciding what there is to improve what we can do and everything. So I've I've been looking towards being a meat scientist in the future, but there's plenty of job opportunities out there being a butcher and 
other things. So. Now I know you're a smart young man, but you haven't done this alone. Who's helped you get to this point? Mr. Rush, the Sarkovsky FFA advisor, is letting us use his um, meat lab. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Whitaker from the Miller, he's the Miller FFA advisor. He has definitely helped a bunch um, and everything is done. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? Uh, Cloud Smith has done a really good job letting us uh, just come in and watch what they're doing. And then uh, Bob McNary with the Jasper County Extension coach. is our coach and he's really helped, helped us learn everything that we need to know. 